better recognize. You 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 better recognize. I just realized John got yeah. slides on. I did not. I definitely realized it. And I asked him not to put them in there. Them slides but is it, in there, boy. But it makes me look <laughs> it makes me look renegade-ish with slides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not improvising. I'm not improvising with slides. <laughs> yeah, John doesn't improvise with slides. John, Amici, Tandy, and myself, we do improv in Houston. We're a group hey. called Can't Tell Us Nothing. Uh, and we also do it here on the Can't Tell Us Nothing show. We're using discussions, opinion topics, whatever. Uh, we'll just hop in the scenes and do our thing. Um, we got some shows coming up. We got a show this week on mm -hmm. Thursday. Mm -hmm. Fresh City. Yeah, check Crush that out. City. Come seven. see us crush, crush. Eight. Eight. <laughs> seven, yeah, eight in that time. Bring, bring, bring your crush to Crush City while we crush <laughs> the crush city bring your crush to crush city i like it yeah next time we should ask how many crushes are out there we've never mm. we've never really taken a poll we've never done that mm -hmm. yeah how many of you are here with your crush, with your go, crush. go to go to romantic comedy route have a, rom a rom-com set rom-com <laughs> set all right real quick going around the horn favorite rom-com michi go um uh uh Nodding Hill. Ooh. I've never seen it. Tandy. Okay. <laughs> I was man, you caught me. I got quite a few. Um come back to me. When you think about <laughs> no, it. no, no. You gotta go now. Oh, I gotta say, I gotta say. Uh, still when Harry met Sally. Right. Okay, John, right, go. John. Booty call. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite rom com. <laughs> it's a rom com song. It is, it is. <laughs> And Charles For me, I'll go with uh, Miss Congeniality. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I don't, I don't yeah. think I... So, I don't think I've seen any of those movies. I'm you haven't seen like, Booty Call, Antoine? <sighs> it may have come on TV at some point. I caught pieces of it. We gotta but, do a see Tom watch his Booty Call, man. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm down to watch it. Who's in it? Jamie Foxx. Mm -hmm. Tommy Davidson. Oh, okay. Vivica A. Fox. Tamala Jones. Bernie Mac. <laughs> Damn. And, uh, and from your memory, what is the plot of that movie? Jamie Foxx and Tommy Davidson are going on a double date. <clears throat> and they disagree on their views on relationships. Jamie Foxx character is like a one night hit it, quit it, you know, don't, you know, that kind of job. Tommy Davis is about being all his girl likes class, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, and, and the booty call is more or less about the relationship you would have with a woman so that you could have the booty call set up. So they kind of explore sexuality and dating, which I think is really relevant now today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, booty call, you know what I mean? Crank it back, son. People are sleeping um, on it. But it has one of my favorite <laughs> scenes, one of my favorite scenes in, that makes me laugh to this day with Bernie Mac. <laughs> um, they would go into a gas station to get safe sex devices, AKA condoms, AKA um, pro choice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, um, and of course it's like 12 or one o'clock in the morning and they see this pastor in the church, in the gas station. And he goes and he's like basically smiting them for buying condoms this late at night because there's only one thing you're trying to do this late at night. And then, of course, as he's doing that, his hooker walks in and asks him, hey, what's taking so long? <laughs> and uh, right in front of him. And I've had <laughs> not that situation happen, <laughs> but the smugness. I've had a smug situation very similar to that. So I just think it was hilarious, all the, you know, 
OGs trying to shit on young guys doing the same shit, you know. So check it out, booty call. Okay. Also, I'm I'm changing I'm changing my phone. Um, <laughs> I, I I I just did a quick search. I, I found three immediately that I, I like better. Mm-hmm. Um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Uh, Jerry Maguire. Yeah, it's wrong. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry Maguire. Maguire. And uh, one that popped up that I didn't even think about coming to America. I think. Oh, that is sure a wrong is a good one. Is and and I would probably say rom-com. coming to America is yeah. probably number one for me it, as a rom com. Yeah. Honestly, that's a good one. You I really forgot that was a rom com. It's interesting. Yeah, you you did because it is definitely a stronger comedy than mm-hmm. your typical yeah. rom com, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't yeah. Yeah. necessarily. That's a rom com. Yeah. Does it's it follow rom-com. the formula? It may follow the formula. But it kind of yeah, does. Yeah. The, the it's comedy a it weaves mm-hmm. in, it, 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 it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of stands on its own, right? Mm-hmm. I'm changing my vote. I'm changing my vote. Well, I, I say the comedy, the comedy pushes the story, but I don't think it changes. But mm-hmm. Tandy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's something about Mary. It okay. is it is one of my top it is one of my top yeah. 20 movies of all for time. Sure. For sure. And yeah. that is definitely a rom com. Yeah, that's that hilarious. A lot of a lot of slapstick comedy stuff I still quote. I mean, I still like when Harry met Sally, but yeah. Along Came Polly is up there for me. Really? I haven't yeah. found a lot of Along Came Polly lovers in my childhood. I, I loved Along Came Polly. I thought, um, what's, his, what's his name that played his buddy? Philip Seymour. <clears throat> Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, that was the funniest yeah. character I've ever seen him do ever in my life. <laughs> <laughs> And that actually, I've seen a lot of his movies. That was the mm-hmm. where I liked him the most. And let it rain. <laughs> but yeah, what? why is there no category for drum com? Like we got the rom com. Mm-hmm. I guess you gotta like why mm-hmm. not? I mean, I mean, wait, rom com. So rom drum. Why is there no rom drum? Rom drum. Yeah, that, that's like that's Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> 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 that's yeah. like Persuasion. every other. That's, that's, like every that's the other notebook, version. right? Isn't that the yeah. notebook? I would yeah. say the notebook is. That's the wrong. It's a walk yeah. to remember. <laughs> yes, there you go. Drum, but drum coms. There should be a drum com for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think drum com <laughs> may be or it's wearing gone. the cloak of like dark comedy. For uh, sure, I think, I think but maybe that. I would argue, yeah. Forrest Gump. Could fall in there as a drum com, kind of. Yeah, 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 that one, yeah. Well, well, Forrest Gump is known for its comedic stuff, but it's not really a comedy. That's so true. It's more of a drama about this coming, it's like not even a coming of age, it's more of like, um, I don't even know how to place it, but it's definitely a drama because he goes through some challenges for sure he loses the love of his life mm-hmm. ends up getting her back and you know ch- you know she has her disease and stuff but it's pretty emotional yeah. loses his best friend lost his best friend mm-hmm. you know took care yeah. of his captain lieutenant dan see we need like a blockbuster so we'll know what section and I think, like, I was thinking, like, where would Blockbuster put this? And I just remember in, it the, just in, in the, the Blockbuster. Yeah, I was going to say it'd be in a Blockbuster hits. section. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it would just be like, oh, it's a, yeah. They wouldn't, there's no category. It's just, a, it's it's a hit. You, you want this. What what would you say, Antoine? What what, what do you think? And I want to hear Michi's on that, too. What is about Forrest Gump go? Yeah. Oh, what what's category would go in? Mm-hmm. Outside of the hits. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably drama. Hit. Yeah, I think I think just the tone of the movie is more like like you have Gump who has his demeanor, right? His perspective. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, has a stupid like look. Every everyone around him, I would say, is very dramatic, except for maybe uh uh Bubba. <laughs> I think Bubba was Bubba was <laughs> Bubba, Bubba was, was dramatic. Bubba was dramatic. Was. I, I would say it was a fish out of water for sure. Ooh. Fish out of water. Yeah. So then, it, isn't, that, isn't that comedy? Then that's a fish out of water. Like that's the that, character. That's... But yeah, we're following this character through all the events of the like second half of the twentieth century, uh, with his like sort of different view on things that are happening, right? And his his sort of 
different experience than maybe everybody else that, who's gone through these things. Um, so yeah, and yeah, he is like a fish out of water in all these situations. It it kind of is a comedy in, in that yeah. sense. It definitely, yeah, it definitely has yeah. comedic elements. I think that's why people like it because it kind of rings those both rings the bells yeah. both. The premise is so dope, but the fish out of water mm-hmm. story is is so compelling that you end up what you end up sitting through that movie longer than you probably thought you would. And it's a good movie. Yeah. It's a legitimate good movie. And Tom Hanks still had that background of comedy, right? Bosom buddies. Mm-hmm. That's what I first saw him and all these other comedic movies and then you know he becomes this huge star and so you're like how do i take this guy you know i've been laughing money, at him money pit while. money pit money pit yeah that's what i mean yeah i'm talking about some of those early comedies that was so you know when you see him you're ready to i'm ready to smile and it's like oh. and he, he does bought, something like philadelphia and then you're like okay you whoa right like yeah 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 man he bodied forrest gump like yes <laughs> That like you could if you I, I agree with like the Tropic Thunder, he would have went too stupid. Oh. It would have <laughs> it it been too hard. He but he had like he was like a soup. He had like a superpower. He could just like relentlessly overcome anything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, but people thought he was an idiot. I, I thought it's. Yeah. I I think it's a com. It's definitely framed. From a fish out of water like a comedy, mm-hmm. but it was still pretty dramatic. He lost yeah. it. Yeah. You know. Lieutenant Dan time. lost his legs. Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan. You ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. I love that. But you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. No. See? Lieutenant Dan. He killed that role, too, Lieutenant Dan. I like how they show all of his family mm. dying, and it started back at like the Civil War. Like everybody, in his family died mm-hmm. <laughs> in the wars of America, and it it's it's a patriotic in a sense, but it's also absurd that everybody, every man in your family, <laughs> dies in the American War. To me, was hilarious. Mm. Sorry. We only remember the funny. I mean, we remember the movie, but we quote the funny parts. We talk about the funny parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 And things like the run, Forrest. That was a huge quote. Oh, that was huge. huge. Run, Forrest, yeah. run. Can't sit here. Seats <laughs> taken. <laughs> you juxtapose that with something like Dumb and Dumber. Which <laughs> <laughs> is kind of a similar... <laughs> Situation to it, yeah. I love what's Dumb going Dumber. on. Dumb and Dumber uh, is top 10 comedy for me, man. Everyone around them is serious, mm-hmm. fish out of the water. It, it, it does not hit the same <laughs> in the same weight no. class, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> the the, the so material, comedy. yeah. I was gonna say, that, yeah, I mean, they literally made that dude that mobster OD from putting too much of his uh. What was it? Too many peppers in his like? No, he they he forgot his pills. They hit his pills, and they put a whole bunch of peppers in his sandwich. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> and he died. He damn near dies, and they laugh in his face. That's not yeah. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump no, is Forrest the Gump. opposite. Of Gump. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He would, yeah, he wouldn't laugh. That's he wasn't a per- he wasn't a perpetrator. <laughs> nope. Yeah, they were pay- playing pranks and and you know, kind of. They and they had a purposeful mission, whereas you know, Forrest just accidentally moved through, changed life. the world. Yeah, he did everything. Yeah. 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 I would love to see a yeah. black Forrest Gump. Maybe Forrest Good Part Two or some. And I don't typically like the v- black version of anything, but mm-hmm. that would be hilarious because there's so many critical black moments that it, it would be interesting to see someone accidentally setting off all of these black events in a movie. Um, to me, I think would be hilarious. Think about it. Somebody who's at the Tupac shooting, somebody who's Martin Luther King, you know, somebody who's like a like <laughs> had something to do with 
all of those events, right? Like just to me, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I'm trying to think what events. Those all well, sound awful. Did... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... hoping you're hurting. <laughs> well, like a... Name things. There were things like that at Forrest Gump. There were uh, racism yeah. in Forrest Gump. There was assassinations in Forrest Gump. There was the Black Panthers in Forrest Gump. There was domestic abuse in Forrest Gump. There was addiction. Come on, man. Like he he'd be the person to uh uh I'm trying to think of how you would do it. Um, like the person who would accidentally step on Obama's toe when they're trying to decide who the next Democratic nominee would be when Obama's going to go, oh! And they're like, you, that's right, you. That's you. <laughs> he said things in the most. Yeah. <laughs> That uh, okay, yeah, I like that. It, that would be a probably yeah. more a darker comedy, but nonetheless, <laughs> comedy <laughs> drama for sure. Oh, well, that'd be that'd be great. Like, Yo, it would know. be awesome. Oh my god, it'd be awesome. Some mm -hmm. kind of way he turns Oprah on to TV, mm. like being a host. Like mm -hmm. maybe her family doesn't have TVs, and she goes to. I don't know. I he he he, he, he cooked. He made Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, some like bad fish one day. And that was a game he had, the flu game. You know, <laughs> just all kinds of shit that you could just do. <laughs> well, my, he was supposed to wire the Pepsi commercial a certain way, and it fucked up and caught Michael Jackson's my, hair on Oh, fire. my gosh. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, like, it was so many events you could do, you know, that in black history, because there's so many figures in black history that nobody knows that. <clears throat> are significant people in history that you could that would be a funny way to share black history with the, in a satirical way because like Forrest Gump makes uh -huh. you kind of re look at historical things and actually it becomes funny because you pair that with what would happen or what your version of what you believe happened so maybe that's what we're missing man we need black history movie. we need like a Forrest Gump movie I never, I never actually watched these movies, but is that essentially what happens in the Bill and Ted movies? I don't know. I've never watched them either. Do they go back and change anything? Or I thought the whole That's goal I, was just. I to... thought they went back in time oh, or something. They did uh, for the. Yeah, I, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen any yeah. of that. All right. Well, then let's just shoot for Forrest Gump then. <laughs> right. the Bill and Ted movies. But, but, but back in time, remember he just told a story to about his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. this you is know. just him telling a story. This yeah. is him going back in time. No, yeah, it could be like just a guy in a barber shop that everybody <laughs> just doesn't talk to. He comes in, and then one day he just finds out this guy was a significant piece of almost every major black moment in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then we'd have to chart out those major black moments. And, yep, in a yeah. in time sequence. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to oh. be old. <clears throat> He'd be old as shit too. Yeah, that's the thing. You'd have to pick the time period, like you know, mm -hmm. from when to when. Forrest Gump wasn't around forever. They got what? Where we get like the what was the oldest thing? The oldest person he was he like, was. I know Elvis. He, he influenced mm -hmm. Elvis. Um, it was he. He won the Elvis. national championship in Alabama. So I want to say it was around the fifties or sixties. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So if we pick that. Oh man. Yeah, that same time period. There's a lot of great stuff in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, his 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 daddy and granddaddy could have also been like people that triggered certain like things and before his time you could kind of dance on that you know yeah say, say that for the sequel <laughs> <laughs> or, or the prequel <laughs> the prequel yeah <laughs> yeah man <sighs> well yeah i was looking for that beyonce lyric that she got that got banned Anybody know what the lyric was? I don't know all the words. Um, I tried listening to the album, but it was raining really hard, and it was really noisy in the car on the way back from my vacation. So I 
I, it, it was a dance hall for sure, but I I wasn't listening to a lot of the words. But yeah. I'm like, damn, Beyonce got canceled. Mm -mm. No, she got the. Mm -mm. She didn't get. Canceled. She didn't get canceled. She she got she got blocked. She got <laughs> oh, she got blocked, but she fixed it. Yeah. She changed it. She changed it. What? What? Yeah. What's the? What? What did he say? <clears throat> what, what word did she use? Yeah, what was the lyric? Was, she used the word spaz. She used the like, word. Uh, like same with Lizzo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you same with Lizzo. Spaz. What, what is spaz? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Ah, it's, see. Uh, yeah, I'm learning about a, this as well. Yeah, it's in... Um, it's a colloquialism related to a uh, spastic um, a type of um, uh, uh, paralysis. It's a, yeah, so yes, it's spastic. Yeah, like people. There's a type of cerebral palsy which is called spastic something something. But anyway, it's just the way the body moves when a person is having a spasm. It's it's the de derivative of a spasm. So it's 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 that. And so you know, a word that people have just generally used. For to describe certain things, we find it out is uh, is offensive to um, to um, to our, our our community of people who have um, disabilities. So they brought that to her attention and to Lizzo's attention, and they changed the word. So the <clears throat> mm -hmm. the word "spas" comes from the term "spastic." She's used to refer to people with spastic paralysis. We pause, okay. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that the colloquial way that it's used is offensive because doctors use the word spas to refer to cerebral palsy people. Mm -mm. No, it's it, 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 it changed into a derogatory term for people um, with disabilities, I guess, and has been used to describe weird or uncool behavior. Usually related to, <clears throat> to physical movement, so people say you want to spaz out or whatever. You know, it's like the they're talking about the movement, and that means you've lost control. You, you know, your body is doing these weird whatever things. Makes sense. Yeah. My issue it's, with that is who? It's a voluntary piece of content. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get why she changed it. She has mm -hmm. a brand. People can lose their jobs from the amount of attention that comes that way, but there's a lot of colloquial terms that people use in an artistic fashion. We're not gonna go back and remove all these derogatory words from movies. <laughs> We're not gonna go yeah. back and remove derogatory terms from books. We're not mm -hmm. gonna go back and return like, we're not going to do that. So, <clears throat> you know why? Because people are going to say, well, don't go see the movie, don't read the book. But music, oddly enough, does have an extreme, it has an extreme in culture. I don't like that as a choice. I think there's a mediation point, in my opinion, right? Like, I'll never forget Aaron Magruder, when he first came out with the Boondocks, they brought him on, like, I need to find the article or uh, the interview, but it was like, I don't know if it's CNN, but they brought him on some news channel. And they were like, oh, Aaron Magruder, we want to talk to you about the derogatory words you have in the boondocks, which anybody who's ever seen the boondocks, one could say the words in that show are very derogatory, but they're no more derogatory than I would say South Park. <clears throat> um, they brought him on and they're like, why do you use the word nigger so much, Aaron? And he was like, I don't use that word. I say nigga. And it's because that's how the people in these communities communicate. They understand, like you said, the colloquial cultural context. And it's authentic. Well, like, well, aren't you afraid that blah, 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 blah. And he's like, well, it's on Adult Swim. So I'm doing the best I can to position the content in a way that the right people can have access to it. If a person like me snuck out of bed to go watch the boondocks, you know what I'm saying? You know, like that's that that's some level of governance that has to be mediated with the parents. But if if 
Aaron Magruder took out the authentic communication and language, it wouldn't really be the boondocks. And some of the stuff he's talking about is about people inside our culture. So I've heard black people say, oh, I don't watch that show because it's offensive. Cool, but I'm a fan. So as a fan, that's the experience I choose to have. Now, if the government says you have to listen to Beyonce because she's supposed to make music for us, then yeah, I would be like, man, I pay tax money. Change your fucking music. I'm not paying for you to call people, you know, that I'm in family with or whoever, these derogatory names because we're supposed to listen to your music. Change it. But if I don't have to pay for it or I don't have to click on her name, there's amount of effort that it takes for you to listen to her music that you don't have to do. That's the argument I don't like, right? Which is she changed it for goodwill and good intention. But that's such a slippery slope because like I said, I mean, <clears throat> where, does, where do you cross the line? Does she have to consider it triple X rated for her to have a true authentic, here's what I wanna put out, you know? That's a fair question, right? I don't, I don't know because it's a dance hall fucking album. <laughs> you know what I yeah, do when I'm think, driving? I, like I play the edited version when I have my kids in the car. Yeah. You know, like there's so I many think, options. Yeah, but I think what it is is um, uh, Beyonce and most artists make make music for people. They have a fan base. So if the fan base, some portion of the fan base comes and says, "Hey, I feel excluded. I feel." Um, you know, like uh, I feel hurt by a certain term that you use in, in your music, then it's up to the artist to decide, hey, I want to change this because I don't want to uh, exclude anybody. You know, I love all my fans or they make the decision and say, it's my art. I'm not going to change it. I think that um, and, and I, I, I agree with the, the position she took because it makes the most sense if somebody says, you know, I feel excluded, I feel hurt by something you say, you can always change what you say, right? Saying is, that's just saying. It's, um, uh, you know, that, that's an easy fix so that people feel included. And what it also did was bring to our attention the fact that we're not aware of issues related to, to um, our disabled um, um, uh, communities. We're not, we're not, it's completely oblivious. Um, so, just by them bringing that to our attention nationally, I don't think is a bad thing. You know, that, like I said, that's an easy fix. To change a word and acknowledge that, you know, you hurt somebody or somebody felt left, that's an easy fix. That's not hard. But it shouldn't be a necessity. It shouldn't be necessary. It shouldn't be an obligation that somebody mm -hmm. has to, right? It should be the yeah. artist's choice, which is why yeah. I said, I think it's in goodwill. The problem I have is, Yes, people make people are going to always feel unincluded. There's not one person that is going to make something that everybody likes, right? <clears throat> and you know how much. My question is how much of that is on the person and their own reconciliation of their feelings. <clears throat> um, I'll give you. A, I'll give you an example. Fox News. Now, to your point, right, their fan base probably doesn't care about the <laughs> offensive nature. The ones that do ignore if they say anything offensive towards their demographic. But people complain to them all the time, right? And some of the stuff they say is provably, you know, not fact. <laughs> and um, extremely, you know, I would say um, callous, right? <clears throat> but to your point, I guess... Their fans don't, their fans don't, <laughs> they don't give a shit what they do. My, my thing is, I, I agree with her. I think you should. If you are the person that feels like I missed on that, there's something to be learned from, I don't have a problem with it. And I don't honestly think everybody needs some money to change because you feel some kind of way. That, that, there's always going to be knives and rocks <clears throat> and mean people. Yeah, we, but when they come, from, but if they come from an individual, you can be like, eh. But when it comes from a community, what do you do, right? Because that's a community of people. That's not just one person. I, I asked them how much. How much does this song truly impact their life? None. 
But if their goal is to try to change people's perceptions and, and people's exclusionary practices, then their fight is against anything that makes people think that they're not included or that sets them apart or makes, you know, kind of makes fun of them. They, they are, that's their battle. They don't want that. They want a life where they're included. I agree. So they just pick it up. I know. I fight. agree. My, my thing yeah. is there's no, there's no line. <laughs> there's no line. I feel like, um, like you said, in the ableist community, there's definitely a need for more visibility. Those people have very clear challenges and they don't get as much attention as a lot of people. <clears throat> the flip side, I don't know if that's just the right way to do it, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, per I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I, I have to listen to Fox News. I have to listen to all these channels do exactly those things to 50% of the country. Yeah. And I have to deal with it, right? I, I can educate individually. Um, I do think it's dope that you can have reach of a person like Beyonce and she will listen to you and she wants to meet you halfway. So I do love that about her. I'm always <clears throat> in the beehive. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, I didn't read the article. Yeah. I just, I just, I don't know. I think I'm, I think I'm always going to pick the, I'm always going to lean to the, it doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's sort of equal. You're saying. Yeah. That's, like that, we, yeah. We, we can get, we can get one person to do this, but we can't get other people to do the same thing if they hurt people. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I know that, and I know that's not the yeah. ableist community's problem. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm speaking of this, like as artists ourselves, comedy, I would say is very, Interesting, like I, I, I remember, f never forget Patrice O'Neill interview. He says a lot of offensive stuff, but one thing that I completely agree with is he says like a good joke and a bad joke comes out of the same process. You don't know what something is until it meets somebody who goes, that's not, that's a bad joke, right? And then how many of those people do you have to meet in order for you to truly accept it as a bad joke? If a hundred people say this is a good joke, but you have one person who feels left out, um, you know, and, and emotionally offended, right? Like, how does an artist maneuver through that? I mean, it's, <clears throat> I mean, maybe that's just a, a too much of a question, but my point is, if I think we can solve there, then the other issue of like, how do you uniform it across the board? How do you make somebody, you know, I, not to jump off, but I'll give you another example. Remember the, the comedian that tried to, he said a bad joke about Kobe Bryant. I don't even think it was a joke. I think he just left on a, a ridiculous, hurtful comment <laughs> about Kobe Bryant dying the day he got died. And he talked about all the women that he so, so had some um, alleged, you know, the situation he had back in Colorado. And I remember thinking about that because somebody was like, you know what, John? That's that, that goes against your rule, right? You're offended if you can say something about Kobe Bryant as a joke. I was like, yeah, but that's not a joke that anybody he would have met. Like that 99% of the people he would have talked to would have said, why the fuck are you talking about this when Kobe Bryant died? <laughs> you know? And of course, that made me realize that there are some very, there are exceptions, right? We're dealing with people and feelings and and, and how people react, right? It's very touch and go. <clears throat> of course, he got kicked off social media by the people on social media. Um, and now he's back touring, but it left me to really think of myself and go, okay, if I, if I want to write something I think is funny, if it's a bad joke, then there's education I could learn from it to make it better or make what I'm trying to do better. But what if 98 people say it's funny and two people say it ain't? What do, what do I do? And, and what if those two people are very important people, right? Like, it, what is the matrix of, a, of an artist pushing a green light and standing firm? And what is, when is it when they should back off, right? Like, it's, yeah. to me, it doesn't seem clear, you know? It's not a clear. I think it's an individual. Look at Chappelle. 
I mean, I think it's, a, it's definitely an individual choice, what, what you decide to do. But I think the point you made about the two people who did change their lyrics, they're black women. Um, yeah, Fox News probably is not going to change too much. You know, they, they deal by a whole different code, doesn't matter. But now you're talking about two people who are from communities who have been, um, you know, ostracized and, and um, uh, excluded. And so that may that may inform how they process, you know, made their decision to say, no, they, I don't they may you. have empathy. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to. There empathy. you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have people excluded because I want, you know, I'm an artist who's for all people or whatever their re rationale. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I don't know. Lines will be pushed. Buttons will be pushed. Things will be said. But so many people don't say problematic stuff and they're still funny and they're still artists. I don't know. I just. You guys remember you know, that just, show Girls? Girls, girls. I never girls. actually watched it myself. I never watched it. Yeah. But I remember mm -hmm. something coming across my radar. I think after the first season, people were complaining that it was too white. There weren't any <laughs> black people it? in it. <laughs> <laughs> and so they wrote in some black characters in the next season and to me that just seems like such an odd thing that because yeah. there's it's almost impossible to do that well right yeah, yeah i was because, looking yeah. looking up an article re relevant to it and the title of this one on buzzfeed is girls has gotten less white but not in a good way <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's true, right? Like that that's a that's another nuance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's say I switch the lyric in the song, but now the song sucks. And then you shit on me for making a bad record. No, nah, if right? your one if your one <laughs> word was the thing that made the song, you're appealing to a certain audience. Well, if, if your one, one word is a reason why you want that it changed your whole day, then maybe you're like it's fragile. You know, brittle. Don't know. Maybe don't you don't have enough that. resiliency. Maybe, maybe, oh. you, maybe you're. There's a lot of things it could be. It doesn't necessarily be, hey, I'm left out. Include me, and that's what we should do. Sometimes, like the Dave Chappelle thing, they didn't even really watch the special, and they were complaining about his topics. Oh, so Dave Chappelle has empathy, and he chose not to change, and he chose to take a hard stance against them. And now they're probably, well, at least the, the people in that demographic who are against them, they're probably going to always do a little dance, you know? But, and, and you have someone like Gerard Carmichael, who's taking a hard stance against Dave Chappelle for, for doing what, you know, what Beyonce and Lizzo didn't do, right? Which is change it and back off. I think there's a problem with that. A lot of the complaints... They couldn't have watched his actual content to have a legitimate disagreement. So, like I said, it's it could be. Let me read this one word. It says spaz, but it could have been I spazzed on a beat. Should I change the fucking lyric of spazzing on a beat? Because some of, people would say yeah. It's easy. And some some people would say yeah, and I would say no. <laughs> That's the right word I want to use. We cut to... Uh, there you go. To, I love it. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. We <laughs> cut, to, cut to a break room in a workplace. Hey, John, um, can, I, can, I, uh, can I talk to you about something real quick about this poster you put up? Yeah, yeah. I got about five minutes. Sure. Uh, so I know this is for the company Billiards Night, but on the poster you call it Cue Ball Night, mm -hmm. and some people in the office... They're a little uncomfortable with that term. They're uncomfortable with Q? Q ball. Q ball. Yeah. What makes them uncomfortable? Well, well right. as you know, you know, that's kind of how you refer to bald people sometimes. So people are kind of joking around that it's only bald people can go to it, or you got to shave your head to go to it, or you're going to confuse bald people for the ball. There's all sorts of things going on. Hmm. And so I'm just thinking, well, let's, uh, let's change the poster. You know, the same poster to a different. We I mean, call it billiards night. Oh, you know? well. I if I'm if I'm correct, I heard you say that people were making fun of other employees about this. Has uh, HR so. been included in on discussions on those? Because I don't think making fun of people is something we tolerate here. You know, it has nothing to do with my poster. 
well, your poster is kind of sparking it. You see, you, they wouldn't have done that if you didn't put this word or these words on your poster. So I think if you change the poster, that's going to spread the news to everybody in the office that they should stop stop acting the way that they're acting. Um. Well, there is a cue ball in billiards. So oh yeah, I know. Are you, I saying, know. Are you saying that I can't? We can't I, play with. I don't think you put it on there like with ill will or malintent. Like I don't think you're looking to make fun of bald people, but it. it that's I mean, what's my happening. my my dad is bald. My wife is bald. Maybe, maybe my, you should. My kids are bald. I mean, I'm the only one that has hair in the house. I I showed them before I when I finished it on my Mac last night, and they were like, "That's awesome." I mean, I. I mean, the okay, people are so, offended. Can can I at least uh, uh, hear from myself? Hey, hey guys, hey guys. Uh, sorry, um, see the place to 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 cool off for a minute. Um, you know, there's there's a lot going on out there on the floor. Yeah, right man, now, you look so. you look a little flustered, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, you know, people are really getting uh, getting fired up about uh, you know, this poster you put up, John. Uh, no, not me personally. You know, I think it's okay, but you know, I, I'm kind of in the middle of it because you know, I'm bald. And um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure like a war is going to break out if something isn't isn't done soon. Oh my People God. are just getting getting real heated about it. You know, on both sides. Um, well, John, you better H- change that poster. Is HR anywhere in the building today? I mean, there's a if there's going to be a war, the two things that should probably happen before my poster. There needs to be some citations with these employees causing this, and there may need to be security or the cops because. I mean, it's it's not propaganda. We're going to have billiards tonight, right? And, and, yes, and, we're having and, billiards tonight. And, and, and there are going to be cue balls present, right? Sure, sure. And I'm not yeah. talking about yeah, I'll, I'll bald there. men. I'm talking about the balls that you actually got to hit. I mean, I'm, I mean, it, it, what if I call it <laughs> sticks and balls night? <laughs> Does that mean that all the people who don't have penises and and balls are going well, to Well, I mean, I, I, that was your other poster, right? That was the other poster. The, yeah, you had it out in the hole. Yeah, um, uh, I see you yeah. got through a few different versions of this poster. I, yeah. I, I wanted to capture as much about billiards <laughs> as possible. Because, look, people don't even know what billiards are. Like, when you hear billiards, they don't know if that's what that is. They, they So I wanted to something that could make even the most elementary person know what it is they're going to do and they go cue ball. Oh, cue ball. Yeah, that's the ball you hit pull with. Oh, oh sticks and balls. Oh, you could hit. Oh, excuse me, y'all. Hey, John. Look, I saw that poster in the hallway about sticks and balls. Like, oh, can we wear lingerie? I mean, I don't want to <laughs> be in my suit and have to I... break it all the way down for the <laughs> sticks and balls. Like, hey. <laughs> Why do you think lingerie is needed for sticks, for and, sticks balls? and balls? I know what that means. I know what's going down, John. I didn't know you got down like that. <laughs> you swing. Oh, I'm sorry, Antoine Dimitri. I didn't know y'all was in here. I, I didn't I know you think... got down. I didn't oh, even know. Sorry. Excuse me. I think you are misunderstanding the poster. What? The sticks and balls is clearly there's pool sticks, and under them, there are balls for the pool table. I don't, what, what are we missing here? I don't see any. John, this is about you know that. Uh, yeah. 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 See, look at this poster. It's, it's, it says cue ball night. You know what a cue ball is, right? Who are you talking It's a ball man. <laughs> I'm talking about sticks and balls, John. I bought a bunch of plan B's, baby. I am ready for it. We, we cut to... <laughs> We cut to Billiards Nights, a bunch of bald dudes and women in lingerie <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> uh, John, I um, I don't think this is what what you intended, right? Like, no, it's not what I. Did. I don't understand what was so hard to understand about. The, I put fucking images on the poster. I put an A ball, a Q ball. And a stick. What is the? What I don't you get see, it. See ball guys walking around with their head colored like pool balls, <laughs> crashing into each other. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I'm misunderstanding. Hey. Everything. Everything's left to misinterpretation.